Before I go any further, I have to warn that this uh, video is not safe for work. It's about a sexual practice that the Bisaya practiced that was recorded in the Boxer Codex. Alright, let's get into it. Uh. So early uh, Visayans practiced this. This is a penis ring. Here's the original um, uh, page on the Boxer Codex with an illustration of a penis ring. This is the picture of an actual penis ring. So it's an 8 studded ring of metal, approximately 2 inches in diameter, unearthed in the town of Dumangas, uh, province of Iloilo, on Panay in the West Visayas. So to wear the penis ring, um, as you can see here, there's holes here, and in this drawing, there's a bar that goes through the hole. So the foreskin is punctured and this rod goes through that uh, the foreskin. They have holes in the round part of the wheel or ring, one in the upper and the other in the lower part through which they put a small pin or nail in the same metal of the same metal as the ring and with which they pierce the lower part of the prep pus. I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's part of the foreskin. And thus the wheel or ring is placed on the very genital in the same way that a ring is put on the finger. So, uh, because of the ring, after intercourse, the um, man and the woman are joined for a day or a night in the way dogs remain when they have concluded a similar act. And this they find delectable, especially the women. These are called uh, sagra in their language. So, in the notes here, um, Pigafetta who also uh, was able to document this custom and so were a lot of other Europeans that were around in the area and it was the women who really liked it um, here they say this is what Pigafetta wrote they say that their women wish it so and that if they did otherwise they would not have communication with them I'll probably do another video to just go into the details but before that, I just want to add uh, that uh, many academics feel that the uh, penis rings are explained by the traditional autonomy of women in the region. The nexus between genital surgery and female sexual pleasure is salient in the thoughts of Southeast Asians, including its women. Part 2 on Visayan penis rings. To be safe, just a reminder again uh, that this is not safe for work because of graphic descriptions. If you haven't seen part one, then go watch that video first. So here's an example of the ring that was excavated. And the ring has a metal pin here in the middle, which pierces the penis so that the ring can stay in place. Fortunately, in the footnote, it says here that the pin for this particular ring was not uh, uncovered. So what else? The rings are made of lead, brass, and in some cases, gold. And it is placed on the genitals in the same way that a ring is put on the finger. So these rings are called sagra or sacra, which is a derivative of the Sanskrit chakra, which means ring, wheel, uh, seat of psychic force, suggesting a religious origin to the penis rings. Well, if you watch a lot of anime, I hope... This hasn't ruined the word chakra for you. Yeah, so every time they mention chakra when you're watching an anime, remember that that means penis ring. So what's interesting is that intercourse cannot be done uh, in the normal way because of the penis ring. Because once the penis is erect, then it cannot be uh, removed from the vagina. And likewise, it also cannot be inserted. So in order to have sex, the, uh, where is that? Okay, so the women, the latter themselves, take the penis, not in the regular way, and commence very gently to introduce it into their vagina with the spur on top first and then the other part. When it is inside, it takes its regular position and thus the penis always stays inside until it gets soft. 
for otherwise they could not pull it out. So basically they have to start intercourse while the man is not yet erect and the woman is the one who must carefully place in the soft penis inside the vagina in order to begin. While not in this book, uh, some scholars have noted that this indicates women are a lot more in control of sexual activities because it is they that have to um, initiate by putting the, the soft penis inside the vagina. So this is part three on the Bisayan uh, penis rings. So just to reiterate, this is a not safe for work video because of uh, graphic descriptions. So related to this comment, I wanted to discuss how the Spanish actually reacted upon seeing uh, these practices by indigenous Filipinos. So let's get into how they described it. So just as a recap, uh, Visayan men before the Spanish arrived would wear these, which are penis rings, which they would wear on their penis like a ring. And they'd wear it uh, for more sexual pleasure for both men and women, but more for the women. And according to the accounts, men who did not have this uh, would not get any from the women. So this practice obviously does not continue anymore today because the Spanish banned it. And you can see how they perceived the practice based on how they described it. So here, finally in the sins of the flesh, I mean, st start pa lang, diba? They are used to an object which is the newest and never before seen nor heard of and which seems to be the biggest and most bestial vice that they practice in this particular matter. So just in the introduction, you can see what they thought. Here it says, so here, the Spanish have exerted special efforts after coming among these people to abolish this abominable and bestial custom among the natives, punishing with beatings those who use them, and in spite of this, they continue to use and make them. So yeah, the Spanish really did not like this practice. It is a custom invented by the devil so that men will offend God, our Lord, more with this vice. So safe to say the Spanish were really scandalized. However, so now we, we come into the account by Pigafetta. And he describes it uh, quite uh, plainly. You're just describing what it is. But the funny part here is this. I very often asked many, both young and old, to see their penis because I could not credit it. So that, that mental image for me is really funny. So apparently Pigafetta was going around the Philippines just asking people, Hey, show me your dicks. Come on, come on, show me your dicks. Now, if you think he was um, progressive, he ends with this though. Um... Those people make use of that device because they are of a weak nature. But apparently, he was really fascinated by it. So, yeah. So now that the elections are done, back to our regular programming. To all those who voted, uh, good job in practicing your civic duty. So on to less painful things. Penis rings again. So I found another uh, account here in Barangay by William Henry Scott, which uh, gives some more insight into the penis rings. So one of the questions that came out in my other videos that I also did not know the answer to was how exactly were the rings attached? Luckily, in this book, they have a clearer description. So a pin called the Tugbuk was inserted in childhood and it looks like it really did insert into the head of the penis because it says here that it penetrated the urinary canal and therefore had a hole to facilitate urination. So based on my understanding, it was probably inserted somewhere here on the head of the penis and it uh, went through the urinary tract. So the pin probably had this hole here on the track so that the urine can come out uh, there. 
So the bars were made of brass, gold, ivory, or lead. Big question there. Did, did they get lead poisoning? I don't know. Or a little tube of tin driven across the head of the penis to protrude on both sides far enough to receive decorations, which range in size from simple rivets to hold them in place to rose rosettes as large as the roll of a horseman's spur. So just to give us an idea of the size, so one dug up in Dumangas, hopefully I said that right now, Dumangas Iloilo, um, had protrusions with a diameter of 5 centimeters, but some were reported in the 16th century to have been 7 centimeters with a weight of 230 grams. So just as reference, 5 centimeters, that's, that's this big. That's the diameter, so ball pen for reference. Ah, uh, yeah. For more videos on pre-colonial and indigenous Philippine culture, folklore, and mythology, subscribe to my YouTube channel and look for me on TikTok.